and, and so I, I want to just read this a little bit um, from Luke chapter 1. Because I believe that this is the birthing season. And this is kind of the mentality that we've got to take on ourselves. Okay, it, it says in, the, in verse 26, In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth. Um, I believe that in this time, God's going to start sending angels in mass force to this area. You cannot do what God's called you to do here without angelic help. One of the best books I know on the subject right now is Angel Armies by Tim Sheets. I recommend it highly. We actually have a course at, C at, at, at um, uh, VLI, uh, Vision Leadership Institute, that you could talk to Pastor Anna about, that he came and he taught it. But there's angelic interaction. It says that angel, this angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Turn to your neighbor and say, Rejoice, highly favored one. God is with you. Amen. And the angel said to her, Blessed are you among women. Women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Remember, God is putting a mantle of favor on this region. God's putting a mantle of favor just like when Esther came before the king and the king stretched out his scepter of favor and said to her, Ask what you want. And she began to tell him her dilemma like you've probably been telling God the dilemma of this region. And the king's response to her was, okay, Esther, you just go ahead and write your own decree. Write a new decree. Write it in the king's name. Seal it with the king's signet ring. Whatever you write, I'll seal it. And whatever I, write, I seal cannot be reversed. Some of you have been waiting on God. God's actually been waiting on you. His scepter is extended. And you're going, Father God, I need this. He's going, okay, write the decree. Okay? And behold, you'll conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He'll be great and be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he'll reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I don't even know a man? Have you, has God ever spoken something to you and you just go... How in the, that's how I felt when God said, you're going to go to the nations of the world and preach. I didn't, even have a, I didn't even have a grid for that when God said it, but I believed it, okay? And the angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Come on, that's the overshadowing presence of God. We cannot do this without the overshadowing presence of God, the anointing of God, the glory of God, the mantle of glory that God wants to put over this region, it says, therefore, that holy one who is to be born is called the son of God. Now, indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her who is called barren. Let me just say this. I believe that there's a movement that is getting ready to come on those that are of the older generation. You know, a lot of times when we pray for revival, we pray for the younger generation. And believe me, they need prayers. But how many know that there's a lot of people in their 70s and 80s in this place that still need Jesus? And I just, I just heard the Lord say, I'm going to do a multi-generational thing. It's not just going to be one generation and the, and the upcoming generation. It's not just going to be fathers and children, but it's going to be multi-generations. God is a multi-generational God. He describes himself over and over as a multi-generational God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I believe you're going to see a multi-generational heart. How many of you still have parents that need the Lord? Okay. How many still have brothers and sisters that are maybe in their 60s, 70s, or 80s? I'm having a really hard time understanding that I'm getting ready, to be, um, that I really am part of that generation. I've already got grandkids, so I guess I'm part of that generation. In my head, I'm still part of the younger generation, okay? So I like to say that I'm the oldest member of the younger generation, okay? <laughs> okay? <laughs> so I, I believe that there's going to there's gonna be a multi-generational harvest that's going to come. And it says, this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. There's a spirit of barrenness that's being broken off. When we talked about dry bones last night, that word dry bones is translated many times sterile, barren, and unproductive. There's a lot of things spiritually in this region that have been barren, sterile, 
and unproductive, but I believe that God is breaking barrenness off this region, and I believe God's breaking barrenness off your prayers. God's breaking barrenness off your decrees. God's breaking barrenness off your planted seed, and God's bringing this region into super bloom. How many know a desert looks barren until it super blooms? Come on, get ready for a super bloom season of harvest over this region. Because then it says this, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. I want you to say that with me. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Let's declare that again over this region. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Say it again. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Father, every well of revival, every well of awakening, every well, Father God, on every college campus, Father God, every university that's gone in a wrong direction, God, there's still a well there that needs to be dug. And we declare the barrenness is coming off this region, and we declare that with God, nothing shall be impossible. And then Mary said, behold the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. Church, we got to understand, God is going to say things over this region that's going to blow your minds. And you're going to say, how can this be? How can it be that God would give a phenomenal harvest out of an area of the country that's arguably housing some of the greatest wickedness? Can we just, I mean, God actually loves those parts in the earth. God loves those places. God loves to take some of the darkest, most bondage-held places and turn them around. There's some of the most spectacular shining lights of transformation that can ever be seen. Can revival come out of New York City? Can it come out of Manhattan? Can it come out of the Bronx? Can revival come out of Staten Island? Can it come out of Brooklyn? Come on, can it come out of uh, Queens? Can it come out of Newark? Come on, can it, can it come out of, I ran out of cities, okay? Sh start, sh can it come out of Camden? Come on, you know what, we've got a church in Camden, and let me just tell you something about the church in Camden that we have, CI's Church in Camden. Um, they moved in there, they, they, start, they planted a church right down on the street that housed all the adult bookstores, all the strip clubs, and all the mob-owned bars. And they started prayer walking that street. I don't know what street it is now, but I don't know if you even know what street it was. Yeah, it might be. I don't, I'm not sure which one it was, okay? But this was 25 years ago. They started coming to CI. They started getting prophecies about taking your city. Let me tell you about Camden. They started walking those streets. They started doing worship on those streets. They started pouring oil on the streets. They did all the crazy prophetic acts that we crazy prophetic people do, okay? They started doing that. They started decreeing, making decrees that some of those businesses were going to start closing down. So the first strip club that closed down, they bought. And they planted a church in a strip club. I'm, I'm not making this up. This is the group that dances at our, at our con uh, that big group that comes and dances at our conference. So most of the elders and leaders in this church are former drug dealers prostitutes, um, all, all pimps, all that, that would walk those streets and they would blast worship out the doors of their church. Literally, when we went to preach there about 20 years ago, they formed a human shield from the car to the door of the church so that we didn't get shot. Okay? And they told us, y'all too white. That's what they said to us, y'all too white, okay? So we kind of stood out right in that area, Okay? <laughs> and so, so we went in there and, and literally they had just bought the church and I, I literally preached up on a platform that was where you could still see the places in the carpet where they'd taken the dance poles out. And I was preaching up there. I love it. Their whole leadership team is people that got saved off those streets. See, God loves some of the darkest places 
to shine his light and his glory into. And so one by one, the businesses along that street started closing. Adult bookshops, uh, um, some of the bars were getting busted for not having proper liquor licensing. The, the strip clubs started closing down, and they actually closed down by their prayers. They started closing down one after the next business, and all those people started getting saved. Some of them got saved and then closed their business. How many know that's the best way to close a business? Okay. So here, what ended up happening, I don't know, about 10 years ago, is that they, the city came in, bulldozed a whole side of that street, and turned it into a park. And now today, it's a place where families go on Sunday afternoons to have picnics. Come on, can you see what I'm, can you see what I'm talking about? This was like the worst of the worst of the city. And now it's a place where families go to have picnics. This is what the kingdom of God looks like. For with God, nothing is impossible. 